Okay, welcome back everyone to our second lecture today, uh, BC314 Media and Technology in Ministry. Uh, we are just covering several different areas of ministry and looking at how um, these have evolved or changed uh, in, in a, uh, to suit um, contemporary expressions, how things are happening. And uh, now we're going to talk about another area of ministry, which um, has to do with uh, radio, television, and films. So we'll just uh, look at that. Now, in uh, radio, now radio used to be, uh, and maybe in some parts of the world it still is, um, a very effective means for mass communication. So, um, you know, back in uh, the 1920s, so that's a long time ago, almost 100 years, um, yeah, the first radio station received um, approval or license to air Christian pro uh, programming. Now, interestingly, in India, technically, technically, uh, we are not allowed to have religious programming on radio. So, therefore, technically, within India, we don't have a Christian radio station. We're not allowed to do that. Um, so, there are, you know, um, FM radio stations that cover different cities, but it'll all be general things. And, uh, sometimes they do sneak in, especially in you know Hindu bhajans or things like that. And maybe during Christmas time they may play, uh, uh, you know, a song here and there. But generally we are not we are not allowed to do Christian or religious programming on radio locally within India. But, but we'll talk about that a little bit later and how in the past uh, how they're you know overcoming that. Uh, restriction. But going back to what happened in the US, 1920s is when first Christian programming came on radio. And I had mentioned about Amy Semple McPherson uh, in the early part of the uh, 20th century or 19, early part of 1900s. She used to radio very effectively uh, to broad broadcast her sermons from her Santa Monica based church, the uh, Angelus Temple. So, and they had their own radio station. Uh, and uh, so this was the first station that was owned and operated by a church. Now just think about it, you know, uh, a church having their own radio station and broadcasting um, in a gospel Christian programming 24 seven all the time. Uh, back in 1950, Billy Graham, he uh, had his own radio program. Uh, broadcast across the nation, the art of decision. So, so the use of radio for Christian broadcasting goes back to the 1920s, the early part of the 20th century, and so uh, it's, it's it has been very effective. Um, what also is very very important is the use of shortwave radio or AM radio, which can travel long distances. So FM radio is very short distances, but shortwave radio uh, could go long distances, uh, cover long distances. So you can broadcast and you go across continents. So shortwave radio, uh, as we mentioned here, by, was used by fever. Um, uh, so it has a long history and uh, it was used very well by FIBA. Uh, FM radio came around in the 1970s, so on, um, where it, it's localized, it's for a city and so on. But let's just talk a little bit about FIBA, Far, um, Far East Broadcasting Associates or Association. Um, so um, back in, you know, around the 1960s, they set up a short radio station in uh, Seychelles. And from there, they began to broadcast, especially to regions of the world, 
that were not easy to access. So uh, now, so the radio waves transcend these um, political and legal boundaries because it's coming in the air. Nobody can stop it. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, they can try to uh, uh, prevent people from having devices to listen if they want to control. But generally, if people have radios, they can connect and listen to what's coming in the air. So FIBA did, took advantage of that and actually is very, very, you know, very strategic uh, move that they began from Seychelles, they began to broadcast all the way into Asia and uh, across Africa, Asia and the Middle East. So um, uh, they set up their uh, antennas and their uh, transmitters in such a way that they covered a major part of um, Africa and um, uh, Africa, Asia and Middle East. So, you know, uh, from 1970 all the way to about the early 2000s, they were broadcasting. Now, for example, I know what happened from here in India. Uh, the programs would be produced here in India in all the regional languages. So, you know, here we have more than 15 major uh, languages all across India. So programs would be produced in India by people in India. The program would then be sent to Seychelles. And from there, they would broadcast back into India. So because India didn't have the freedom to broadcast locally, you can broadcast from outside. And people all across India would be tuning the radios and listening to the program. And it was such it was so wonderful. So it had a huge impact um, uh, across the nation in um, bringing you know, uh, Christian broadcasting and making the preaching and the teaching of God's word um, accessible to people throughout the yeah throughout the land, and so it was just amazing, wonderful work that was done through radio. Um, now, with time and with all the other things that came in, now um, this you know with. With the internet, with mobile phones, with the shift to uh, consuming content in other ways, mm, um, shortwave radio probably doesn't have that much of a uh, as big as a uh, um, what to say as big as a space in people's daily lives. Uh, it's uh, because now people are consuming content in different in other ways, but definitely between the 70s to the early 2000s, this uh, had a very huge impact. Now, they still continue, FIBA still continues. I know they still have their office here in India and they're producing programs and sending it out, but the public people generally are using other forms of um, consumption. Um, what we have seen, like we mentioned, FM radio is playing a big part these days uh, in many cities around the world. Uh, wherever um, it's possible, you know, you'll find Christian uh, radio stations, FM stations, broadcasting Christian content, music and sermons and so on. Uh, so that uh, a shift has taken place to more localized programming through FM radio. Um, and uh, then there's also uh, internet radio. So people listen online uh, and they can stream songs and sermons and everything online so uh, all the things have changed a lot to where we are today we shouldn't forget that there was a time when radio played a big part in uh, the dissemination of the, the preaching and the teaching of god's word uh, all over the world it, it did play a big part and we shouldn't forget that another major um, uh, technology that was used subsequent to radio was television. And very interestingly, uh, uh, the people who started using television uh, for ministry were evangelists. And there are three main evangelists. This was back in the 1950s. Uh, Rex Hombard, Oral Roberts, and Billy Graham. 
they were the ones who saw the potential. So they saw that, hey, uh, uh, we can actually use television and uh, you know the sermons, the church, or the meet the uh, crusade. If we put it on television, we can actually reach so many more people. So Rex, Rex Humbard was a pastor. It was, uh, uh, when he got, uh, I, I didn't minister, and then he also had his uh, Sunday services uh, in Akron, Ohio. And so he started putting his Sunday services on television. And uh, he started as way back as 1950. And then, and then uh, by the 70s, 1970s, he was uh, on uh, 650 television stations, 700 radio stations across America, and then also reached out into other parts of the world. Right? So they began to see that, hey, we can actually use television to get God's word out to people. Um, Robert Schiller was an another televangelist who followed that, and uh, he... They used to go live from Crystal Cathedral on radio as well as on television. Oral Roberts was um, the very first one to bring his healing crusades on television. So this was amazing because in those days, in the 1950s, they had these tent crusades. People used to come to the tent to be healed, to receive, you know, to hear the gospel preached and to be ministered to. And he was the first one to say, hey, we can take what's happening here in the tent into the homes of people live. And so he had these television cameras and uh, people across North America would actually be part of the crusade from their homes. And they would, he would pray, pray for them on television and so on. And this began back in the 1950s. Similarly, Billy Graham also began to use um, television and began to telecast his crusade live. Um, starting from the 1950s. So uh, if you look, and from then on, and it just exploded, people all over the world today, um, you got huge, huge number of Christian networks. And at one point, uh, TV was, television was a big tool to share the gospel or to get the word of God out. It still is there, but like we said, because of the internet and how people are consuming, it has gone down a little bit, um, maybe not as low as the radio, but it's there, maybe. Um, but today, a lot of people are consuming through the internet. But television, there was a time when television was a big instrument, a big tool that was being used uh, for the proclamation of God's work and so on. Uh, what we saw, you know, once the individuals started using these um, means people who could afford or had the money to do it. Shortly after that, uh, television networks began to come into existence. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, CBN, TBN, PTL, uh, lots of others. Um, uh, and uh, many of them are continuing till today. CBN, TBN, I think, continue till today. Um, so television networks, basically, they give, bring in many, many people, many ministers and, you know, uh, have them but buy time and deliver the content to the homes of people. Uh, so TV networks began to play uh, an important role. And um, this spread globally. So by the 1980s, uh, TV networks, Christian television networks became more of a global phenomenon. You'll find them across the world. Uh, and uh, 1990s, early 2000s, we had some here in India as well. So um, APC as a church, we did our bit on radio and cable TV as well as uh, satellite TV. Uh, we no longer are on these channels, but we used to do them. So I remember the early 2000s, uh, we were producing radio programs. It was called Voice to the Nations. Uh, we did that for a few years, uh, and we did it through shortwave. So we would record the programs, radio programs here in Bangalore, India, and uh, they would go through FIBA radio from sessions. So they would be 
broadcast from on FIBA radio from sexuals. And we did that for a little bit of time. Um, and then we discontinued that because then after that, television became a big thing. You know, the people uh, were not so much on radio, so we moved. So we we also did cable TV locally, uh, right from the early days, like as far as I can remember, the early 2000s. Uh, we um, would record our programs separately and put them on cable TV here locally in Bangalore to reach homes here in our city. And then, um, if I remember correctly, I think it was 2012, and those days, God Television, God TV was quite big. And they were from the UK, and they also had a God TV Asia, I think. Uh, uh, Asia network, TV network on Asia. So God TV reached out to us in 2012. They asked us, you know, if we could get on God TV Asia. And again, if I'm not mistaken, like we were the first church in India to get on God TV uh, Asia. Uh, or for sure, the first church in our city. <laughs> uh, anyway. So we were on God TV, the TV network, satellite network, from 2012 to 2019. So, and, and this was a weekly program, uh, 30 minutes program, Monday evenings, 9 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. once a week. Now, it was a lot of work, a lot of money, um, because you had to pay for 30 minutes, and people could only watch at that time, so they had to sit in front of the TV at 9 o'clock to watch. And, uh, and you know, it cost us money to make those programs and produce it. Anyway, but we went from 2012 to 2019. But in 2019, we decided to go off television because we realized that uh, people were shifting. People were moving away from television to YouTube. You know, why, why, why would people want to pay for cable television or their television networks and in order to see this? And so intentionally, we, we, we decided December 2019 was the last broadcast on God TV, the TV network, and we moved off television. So we came off radio, we came off television, and we decided that, hey, everything is available now online in, on the internet, and people are consuming when they want to, how they want to. So uh, we also focused on just releasing our content through our website and YouTube and other channels so that people can consume it whenever they want to. But there was a time when radio and television was important and useful, very useful in uh, reaching out to people. Um, just add a little, uh, one more thought on Christian films and then we'll just have a little bit of discussion on these three things on radio, television and films. So. Christian films are also very, very powerful medium to communicate truth, communicate the word of God uh, and um, biblical values and principles, if it's done properly. Okay? So uh, uh, the, uh, I think we should say the pioneer in Christian films, right? So of course, general films are lots of people. But, the pioneer in Christian films, making Christian films, uh, would be this man, Cecil Blanc de Mel, who's an American film producer. And uh, as early as 1914, so we're talking more than 100 years ago, he made about 70 films. I remember early days, it was silent films, so just film, no, no sound, uh, before they could add the sound to it. So there were silent films, and then then came sound films. So he, you know, he pioneered these things, and then he produced Christian films. So the um, 1923, the Ten Commandments, uh, was was produced as a silent film then, and. Uh, for 25 years, it was the highest grossing film. And so you just think about this, um, that the Ten Commandments about Moses receiving the Ten Commandments, that film uh, produced by that studio um, 
was the highest earning film for a long time. And those are silent films, so no music, no sound. Um, then he produced many others, King of Kings, Samson and Delilah uh, was the first sound film in 1949, Bible-based sound film. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, lots, lots and lots of other films have been produced. I think one which really went global, I think, at least in, in recent, no, not also in, in, the, in the last few decades, which uh, made big news all over the world was The Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson. Um, this was in the early 2000s uh, and so on. So films have been a very powerful tool. And I think the biggest testimony to the, to the, to the, to the use of films is the Jesus film that was produced by uh, Campus Crusade. So this was way back in 1979. They produced the life story of Jesus, the story of the life of Jesus in film uh, and launched it in 1979, launched in the US and then translating to other languages. So 1980, shown in Hindi in India to 21 million people and launched in other parts of the world. Uh, 1984, 100 languages. There's one film translated into 100 languages, 1984. And then uh, they also uh, launched the Jesus Film Project, launched it online. Um, that means, uh, you know, so just imagine, imagine back in the 80s, they had to carry these big films, physical roles and Put on these big projectors and put on the screen like that, you know. And so, of course, then came movie theaters, DVDs, and so on. And now it's online. So, from 1997, online, one billion people have seen the Jesus film, translated into 400 and 400 languages, um, audio versions, and so on and so forth. Okay. 2003, 800. 2022, 2000 translations. So just imagine this one film is the most translated film in the history of in human history, the Jesus film. It's just amazing. It makes us feel so happy. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, think about how powerful a tool this is. You know, we don't know. We don't know how many people all over the world uh, have been brought to Jesus by watching this film. Yeah. Um, we don't know, only eternity will tell us the impact. So imagine the person or the people who produced the film first in 1979. And imagine they may not have envisioned you know, how big a reach and how big an impact this would have had. But here we are today. This, this one film has impacted millions of people all over the world. Okay. Now, some of the other things to keep in mind are, are short films. Um, so they, they, there was a time, you know, people, I mean, maybe, of course, it still is, where people sit for two hours, sometimes three hours watching a movie. Uh, but then um, there, there's, you know, there's this whole thing about short films, putting smaller versions, 20 minutes, sometimes anywhere from five to yeah, 20 minutes, short films. Uh, using that to engage audiences. So that's also another area that we should think about. Um, very interestingly, very interestingly, a local church entered into filmmaking. Uh, you, you'd usually think about big studios making films, but Sherwood Baptist Church in Albany, Georgia, I don't know how how you know how God led them into this, but they ventured into Christian filmmaking early 2000. And since that time, they've made some amazing movies, films, you know, Flywheel, Facing Zions, Fireproof, which became you know, a number one independent film, and uh, Courageous, Ballroom, 
uh, and so they have produced many. Yeah, and imagine this is this is a local church producing high quality movies, films which are you know going global all over the world, and they're communicating something from the Word of God in this form, which is amazing. It's amazing, and I think they're continuing to do that. So that's again something for us to uh, think about and praise God for. A couple other things that I'd like to mention is children's uh, uh, videos. So VeggieTales, uh, uh, you, you, you know, the company doesn't exist anymore, but you can see some of what they produced. Um, so actually, this a, a very interesting story how it all started. Uh, a man, Phil Visham, he was without a job at some point, and then he decided to kind of, uh, you know, just do something for his children, and uh, he started working on some ideas, and out of that came this VeggieTales, these children's movies or you know, animated uh, movies uh, with uh, vegetable characters communicating Bible stories. Very nice. And so at one point, this was in the 90s, 1990s, it was one of the highly, you know, the most uh, watched children's, Christian children's uh, videos. That was very big, very big. And so, and then they produced so many good short films. They're all about, you know, maybe 30, 20 to 30 minutes long, many meaningful uh, uh, videos. Um, somehow, um, you know, the success of this animation, then they thought they can produce bigger movies, and that's where uh, I think maybe they took a wrong step because. Um, Trying to produce those big movies actually sunk the company, uh, and the company got into financial trouble, and they couldn't stay alive. But whatever they did, the work they did was amazing, amazing. And so you could still watch VeggieTales videos uh, on YouTube. I guess they're, they're available. And uh, but it was an uh, it was an amazing time for the time that VeggieTales was being produced uh, for almost uh, twenty some years. It was big, it was very useful. Right, so we'll pause here. Um, I just want to hear your thoughts, your experience uh, with radio, television, and films. Um, now, nowadays, um, nowadays, um, consumption has moved to the internet. Not so many people are watching, sitting in front of television, but many people are on their phones or laptops consuming content. Uh, not many people are necessarily li listening to radio, but many are listening to podcasts on their phones. So there's been this whole shift. And so we'll be talking about that in the weeks to come. Um, so is there a place for films and movies? Yeah, just that people are consuming it differently. So people may watch things on you know, YouTube or other social media. And so we have to adapt to the way people are consuming these things today. Uh, and also think of how we can produce films that will be relevant to people in the world in which they live, today's world, bringing biblical truth to address today's challenges. We'll have to think about that. So this is an area we as a church are also getting into. Um, we've just they're putting together a team of people here, start producing short films, one you know, produce five minute films, very powerful, effective, you know, addressing challenges that are facing people in the community in urban settings, bring bi biblical truth, and so on. So that's an area we are working on. We're just excited about that. Hopefully, um, this year we'll come out with some short films, five minute films, and uh, we'll see how that goes. And it's a learning for us as well. All right, so let me stop here. I uh, just want to hear your thoughts, um, your ideas on radio, television, and films. Any comments, any thoughts?
so regarding uh, radio and television as you know, pass was uh, talking about it i remembered i used to get up for radio programs when i was a small child to listen to god's word 6:15 am and uh, and it was uh, it, the it, it the program which i used to listen was so uh, impactful for many people was many people used to say even if they were from different faith they used to listen to that and um you know many people got saved many people got healed of all the uh, small small tele- uh, radio programs which we had and and um, talking about the sh- uh, short films and, and the music m- movie productions i think um, as uh, there is one series of uh, chosen series which is talking about life of jesus which had impacted many many lives i think um, so because now is an era of season and series uh, you know we watch uh, all this in netflix and all, all the other uh, streaming platforms ott platforms um, and that is also an area of uh, you know uh, people like to see that even though the uh, it, 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 i think it, the same uh, part something like chosen also has an important role uh, in this generation because people like to see it even uh, i think yesterday or day fresh i was reading an article the most watched uh, series has at least 20 episodes uh, 20 seasons actually so so people are interested to watch if it is engaging and if it is you know beneficial for people so i think uh, we as a church also can look at that in in, in long run and, and i think as a church worldwide uh, has a scope for this because even young people uh, in the coming in this generation are also interested in uh, uh, very engaging um uh, see uh, or anything of that sort and also um, as the attention span is reducing it should be uh, less than uh, an hour or 45 minutes or so um, because unless it is so engaging people won't even like movies now is what i have seen and hear from people yeah so to to thank you for sharing that that's um, that's good observations yeah and you know like the last thought that you shared about the attention span yeah it's like you know you know everything quick fast short <laughs> it, and uh, very engaging it's true anyone else want to share anything on this radio television films Okay. All right. So I think we'll um, wrap for today with that. And uh, um, next week mm, we'll do a little bit on uh, entertainment and gaming. So it's kind of connected to short films, but it's a different different space. Um, we'll talk a little bit about entertainment and gaming. Uh, gaming basically video games uh, I, i know it may seem like a little controversial but um it's uh, an important area because uh, gaming is not always a bad thing like video uh, games you know we can, it can be used for education it can be used for uh, training people so for example the military will use video games to train its pilots or doctors physicians and, and surgeries all kinds of things so gaming is being used widely and it's an area where you know we can engage people that means you're watching a video but you're interacting with the video so that's what we mean so we'll talk a little bit about that and then we're going to start getting into um the media and technology part we'll be talking about digital communication so uh you know how you and I how we can leverage uh, the internet and all the tools that are available Uh, to communicate for church and ministry and it's are going into uh, uh, a lot of those areas okay so let's close in prayer today so we could pray with us and then we'll dismiss please yeah let's pray 
Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day, and God. Thank you for all the creativity that you have given us, the talents that you have placed in us, Jesus. And God, help us to not to dig our talents and just wish it away, but to use it for your glory, Jesus. Uh, fill us with your ideas, fill us with your revelation and knowledge so that we can reach out uh, to this generation in various means. Lord, uh, be with us and guide us. We need your knowledge and help us to always uh, keep our thoughts centered to you, Jesus, centered uh, to your kingdom uh, for your glory, our Lord God. We thank you for Pastor Ashish and I thank you for all my classmates. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll connect back next week. God bless you. Thank you.